just moved to Stroud and we've got a garden and we would like to have a perfect vegetable garden. So we're looking for inspiration, really. ever so friendly, but everybody we've met so far has been friendly yeah. as well. I'm very good at explaining what they're doing. So it's to show people what they can grow for their self and eat. It's better than buying it. It's nice really to sort of produce some good tasting vegetables. You know, I can get all my groceries out of uh, this allotment. It's a good exercise and uh, I enjoy it. To be honest, I enjoy it. It's something I've always wanted to do. We've got a real mix of um, plot holders, young families, um, older people, myself. You know, people also got single parents, and it's nice. You come up at the weekend, and it's full of young people and laughter and joyous. And we look to certain people to to find out the experts on what we should be doing and what we should be growing. So it's a real, really nice, friendly plot. So recently, is that we do um, market days. So we've, um, plot holders that got any spare produce. Um, even the raw form, i.e. vegetables or cut flowers, but also we make jams and chutneys and um, people in Stride really appreciate the fact that it's so local. You get a sort of view of my vegetable garden from up here, which is different perspectives. But then there's things like this red orange, which um, are self-seeded, and that you can eat in salads. Um, you eat the leaves and the flowers. The idea of the Three Sisters is that you grow um, corn, beans and um, squashes together and they mutually benefit each other. So the corn produces um, support for the beans and then the, and the beans provide nitrogen in the soil for the uh, corn and the squashes and the squashes provide shade on the roots and keep the soil moist underneath. So they all, um, it's a Native American Indian um, concept and they were their main staple foods. So they're growing very slowly and the rabbits have been um, helping themselves as well. So I'm battling against nature here. <laughs> Whereas try to work with nature, occasionally you find yourself you know, battling against nature. What can you do? Live with it. <laughs> I'm just delighted to share and learn from others. I've got loads of mistakes here in this garden um, which you can look at and hopefully people will say well if you'd done that it would have been all right. It's so much it's so good for the soul too it's just such a um, you know, we're so busy in our world and um, so much on so much stimulus and it's just wonderful to come to the garden and just quietly do some growing and weeding or whatever it is and you know if you're not feeling too good coming down to the allotment and my husband says the same and he comes down here and he just feels better. Well it's now broadly accepted that farming is about converting oil into food. Uh, that's even mainstream talk now. It takes 10 calories of energy to produce one calorie of energy that we purchase um, in the shops. That's clearly unsustainable. We're heavily dependent upon oil not only to drive tractors and trucks the nitrogen fertilizer that we use, 90% of its cost is oil. So that's inevitably going to go up. Um, we're going to reach peak oil. Um, we've probably already reached peak oil, but peak phosphorus, which is the other major element, is now widely recognized as being only 30 years away. So we need to look at ways in which we can become independent of the industrial farming system. And it's difficult for us to grow all of our own food um, in our own gardens, but we can make a start and maybe if we could grow 20-25% of our own food in our own gardens and allotments and swap the surpluses that we've got, not necessarily sell them, but swap them when we have a surplus with other people, um, then we're beginning to take the future into our own hands rather than being cowed like rabbits in the headlights of a car by the industrial farming supermarket access which dominates uh, the food production system at the moment.
thin and light and low in nutrients if you're up on the Cotswold Brash. They don't hold water, but if you've got a bit more clay here, which occurs in pockets all around Stroud, then actually in many ways you're very fortunate because it's sticky, it holds water, you know that, that's what makes it heavy. So in a drought, it holds water around the plants. And also those clay particles in the soil actually have more nutrients in them than the sandy soil. So um, you've got the potential of the clay soil to produce really abundant crops. So you've picked a good site here. But, but for your plant beds as well, it's absolutely lovely stuff and it helps with the soil texture. I do no dig, so in the spring, I've put my leaf mould on in the autumn, put the cardboard boxes on. By spring, those cardboard boxes will be basically rotted. Um, there'll be lots of worm activity underneath any bits of cardboard that are left. And then I just put that on top and then I plant straight into that so I don't have to dig. It's great. In early spring I, I scour the neighbourhood for young dandelion leaves and they seem to eat just as much, as many as, as one can sort of gather. Well I don't know, have you been around some of the gardens? I've been to the one with the chickens. <laughs> and what do you think? <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Remembers this being the place for the donkey yeah. and a car, horse and car. Our seven families working mm. four and a half allotments. Uh, we work communally, we work on a Friday morning, and whoever turns up on that Friday morning takes a share of whatever's harvested that week. Um, we share the running costs of the, of the project between us, and we work it as a four year rotation. So we're growing whole patches of potatoes and whole beds of onions and then, then sharing the produce from those beds. And it's a really easy way of working. It means that no one of us is, is responsible for carrying an allotment permanently. So we go, and go away on holiday in May, and rather than coming back to knee-high weeds, there's other people been managing it for us. So it works really well, yeah. And there's cream and sugar. Oh. Red currant, I think. Oh, wow. nice. we must get the recipe. Aren't they doing well? I wouldn't recommend it highly enough as a pastime. I mean, it's just so chilly. We've been here selling since March. Uh, last year we did an honesty box at the front and it worked really, really well. So we said, let's do it. You know, there's nothing really around this area mm -hmm. for people and to be reasonably priced. Mm. Small community garden, um, which is a group of about six or seven people who come together each week to grow food and uh, share the food, share the work. And we've got four polytunnels and four open beds and we're looking for a few more people who might really like to do it. The commitment is quite a few hours in the summer. Um, our pony Shadow and he's um, learning to work on the ground. He's going to have a whole new career as a market gardener. Him working this. Wow. You see it's got like three, yeah. three tines. Yeah, what do you think? Um, well, we want to live up here. <laughs> we are developing medicinal herb flower bee garden. So, so, so this is a couple, of, a couple of years old now, this garden, and it's just starting to get enough to be able to harvest and produce. So probably by next year we'll be starting producing medicines a lot from it. Right. So far it's been building it this is, wow. this is a Bristol water pipe, <laughs> yeah. which I painted aluminium, and to scaffolding. So the, this has an outside, an inside diameter of, um, of 50 mil, and that's got an outside, outside diameter of 48, so it fits in. Yeah. Have you had many people around yet? Or? Uh, we've yeah. had about 20. We've had about 20 already? Including yourself. Wow. No, that's, yeah. what, that's your... 